Catherine, welcome. Well, thank you for having me here. <laughs> Great day to start, way to start my day. <laughs> yeah, this is fantastic. It's a conversation which has not been had yet on this podcast, and I'm really looking forward to diving into the topic of algae with you. So, shall we get started? Oh, sure. And, you know, you go, be careful because I could talk about this for days, <laughs> but I'll try to, you know, keep it concise. <laughs> I've got 10 years of knowledge to pour out to you and your, and your listeners. <laughs> and as the, the listener base knows, I can talk for days about this stuff too. So I'll just keep asking questions and eventually okay. I'll call it quits. Okay. Fire but away. Let's start with the basics. Uh, what is algae and why should it be a part of a human's diet? Well, hopefully by the end of this pod podcast, people will be asking themselves, not why should they take algae, but why shouldn't they? Um, so let me give, it, get, I'll give you the big picture first. Um, algae is a food group. Uh, you know, we have vegetables and fruit. Algae is a, fr is a food category. So that's number one. It is not a supplement. Supplements are made in labs from artificial ingredients um, and from extracts. Algae is a crop that is grown in water um, hydro, so it's called hydroponically so it's no different than kale or tomatoes that may be grown in water so that's the most important thing that people understand that algae is food it's a food crop and it's a category of food then within uh, like, like let's take um, fruit for example you may have different types of fruit you have bananas and apples well, within the algae kingdom, you have different types of algae. And the two main categories are seaweeds, and the two main ones are red seaweed and, and brown. And the other category is microalgae. And the two main microalgae are blue-green and green. Okay, with me so far? All right. Now, okay, within the, the microalgae, blue-green and green categories, just like with apples, you have Macintosh and, and Granny. So again, they keep subdividing. So within the microalgae, blue, green, green, you have blue, green. One of the blue, green algaes is spirulina. And one of the green algaes is chlorella. And the reason why this is so important for people to understand is that these are the two that are harvested for crops. These are carefully cultivated in water um, you know not everybody cultivates them and grows them as carefully and pristinely as we do but this is these are the two that are grown but very often you'll go online and you'll read about blue green algae toxicity or you know they there's some studies that with blue green algae and and i can promise you absolutely without a doubt i don't even have to look at anything that whatever algae they were using came from an ocean, a lake, a swamp, a swimming pool, because the vast majority of algae is grown wild in all of these other places. And of course they will be toxic because algae absorbs whatever's in the water. If you take a glass of water from a swamp, it's gonna be full of garbage. If you take algae out of the ocean or a swamp, it's gonna be full of garbage. It's exactly the same thing. So, so don't panic when you ever read anything online about you know, algae being toxic, it's only if it is wild. It's the only time I can think of when food that is grown wild is not good for you because you always hear about mushrooms and all these other things. It's better to be grown wild. Not when it comes to algae. You do not want algae wild. So so it's a food, but it has to be carefully cultivated. And um, the two main ones, as I said, the, for, in the blue-green category is spirulina, and in the green category is chlorella. And if you'd like, I can go dive in now, the difference between the two, or, or I can do that later. Give me, I want to table that for one second, because okay. there is this common misconception, or I guess maybe among people who are inexperienced with these, algae versus seaweed. Can we just discuss the differences there? I mean, obviously, sure. obviously you talked a little bit about the cultivation process, but right. I'd just like to understand a little bit more. Sure. Well, seaweed comes from the ocean and cultivated algae is grown in fresh water. Uh, um, algae does grow in, this, in the ocean, but you don't want that one. Uh, the, difference be the main difference between the two of them is seaweed is predominantly very heavy in fiber and 
uh, microalgae has virtually no fiber, like, and that's why it's ketogenic because it also has no carbs. Mm -hmm. um, it's perfect for ketogenic diets and, and um, uh, fasting, etc. So seaweed has high fiber, very. Uh, uh, it has iodine because it comes from the ocean, and it has uh, uh, m much lower nutritional value. Mm -hmm. so microalgae is just high test nutrition concentrated virtually no fiber it's like if, if, if think of uh think of seaweed as maybe uh your child's uh bicycle and uh, microalgae as a rocket ship <laughs> nutritionally because there's no comparison you could eat a room full of seaweed and not even get less than one percent of the nutrients that you would get from a handful of, of algae it's it's crazy but 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 the microalgae that's harvested in most cases has either zero or virtually no no iodine, which is important. Iodine is an important nutrient for, for people's health. But um, so that's the basic difference: tons of fiber versus no fiber, not much nutrients versus incredible. I call it not just I call algae not just a superfood, but a super duper food. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about those super duper foods because you mentioned the blue green form uh, as well yes. as the green form and I want to go into each of those specifically happy to start with whichever one you're most comfortable with but um, let's jump. Yeah. okay well let's do it chronologically so um, uh, most people will not know that algae uh, especially blue green algae like spirulina was the first life on earth almost four billion years ago. Before spirulina, um, earth was just gas and water. I have no idea what caused the spirulina to start growing, but it did, and they have fossils that are carbon dated to like 3.5 million billion years ago. Okay. By the way, we've been only on the planet for about 800 million. And so algae's been here four times longer than humans. And, um, uh, and algae releases oxygen as it, gr it grows. In fact, it provides 80% of the oxygen on Earth. It's not the Amazon forest, it's algae. So mm -hmm. after about a billion years, there was enough um, air oxygen on Earth that other life forms could grow, and chlorella was the next one that, that started growing, and then we, you know, life moved on. So spirulina, let's get back to it. So technically, interestingly, Spirulina is really a bacteria. It does not have a cellulose wall and it does not have a nucleus. It's mm -hmm. called a cyanobacteria. And there's a couple of really interesting reasons why that is important. Um, it, so it doesn't have any of the negative uh, downsides of plants because it doesn't have either. It also doesn't, nor does chlorella, oxalates, phytic acid, lectins, none of those anti nutrients. And we can talk about that later on. Mm -hmm. But what it does have is the richest source of protein in the world. The Germans won a Nobel Prize for discovering this back then around 1917. It has, ours has 64%. Um, it ranges from 60 to, you know, high, you know, low 60s to high 60s. This is the most concentrated source of protein. And not only is it concentrated, it's plant protein. So, you know, vegans, vegetarians, it's available to everybody. And men, as I mentioned, it has no car uh, carbs. So it's great for the ketogenic and also it's, you know, can't get any more paleo than being the first life on earth. So, so <laughs> I say algae plays well in the sandbox with everybody. It does, it meets every single food lifestyle that, that's out there. So very high in protein, 40 vitamins and minerals. So this has all of your, all the um, um, potassium, magnesium, um, uh, that you need. It, it's loaded in B vitamins. In fact, it has so many B vitamins and it has all these wonderful nutrients that work um, so cooperatively and synergistically that it gives you energy. That's why we call our, um, our algae uh, uh, spirulina rather uh, energy bits because it gives you so much energy, both mentally and physically. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, so it gets absorbed very quickly because it has no cellulose wall. There's nothing for your body to break down. That's why our first customers were actually athletes, triathletes, um, marathon runners, Olympic athletes, because they had been using, you know, car carb-based products to fuel them in a race. So like goo and bars and, you know, Gatorades, all which are loaded with sugar. So that if you're keto, forget it. Uh, but they, those all cause stomach distress, diarrhea, gas, it's not pretty. Um, a real mess in your pants. None of that happens with the spirulina, or um, because it gets absorbed so quickly, and literally, it's in your digestive system within um, 
you know, minutes if you chew it, uh, seconds if you chew it almost, and within about five minutes, completely digested uh, with, within about five minutes. So, so it's very um, efficient nutrition. It gets into your bloodstream very quickly. And by the way, all that protein's already in amino acid form. So there's no work for your body to break down the protein to get access to the aminos. And all the other minerals and, and, um, um, and vitamins like uh, the B, all the Bs like B12 are attached to the aminos so they get absorbed very quickly. So it's also a very, very, one more, very, very high in, in um, essential fatty acids, including the omega-3. So, so again, if you're vegan or if you're concerned about sustainability, this is the answer to uh, your omega-3 needs and your brain health needs because um, algae is the most sustainable crop in the world and it has all the, all the essential fatty acids that your brain needs for functioning. So it, it's, it's, yeah. Before we jump into chlorella, because there's a lot of good questions to come around detoxification on this, but also spirulina, in terms of the amino acid profile, is it a, a complete amino acid profile or are there things yes. that are just a little bit less in than others? Yes, it's a complete protein. It has 18 of the 20 aminos, mm -hmm. all the B, uh, um, BCAAs, of course, and um, it has very high bioavailability. Um, eggs are already always considered sort of one of the perfect proteins because it does get absorbed uh, quickly um, and it has a also a complete protein profile. The problem with it, there's a couple of problems with eggs. If you're vegan, you're kind of out of luck, number one. Um, they do contain a lot of sulfur, which can cause gassing, gas and bloating. Um, and, um, uh, and, you know, and I personally, I love eggs. So, you know, I'm, I don't want to be you know, dissing eggs because it's, it's, it's a great food. Um, but it doesn't have any chlorophyll. <laughs> and when you eat uh, the algae, whether it's spirulina or chlorella, you get all the benefits of eggs, plus you get chlorophyll. And we're going to talk a little bit about chlorophyll, about how it is like the, the missing, I think it's the, the, the key to so much of that's causing health issues. So, so Loving eggs, you know, I, I, I don't know if you were, when you were a kid, if you read Dr. Seuss, but there was a book, Green Eggs and Ham, and I'm convinced <laughs> that he must have made his eggs with algae, because uh, that's the only thing that, uh, you know, would um, make them green, at least yeah, I think, anyway. Not the, not so, the uh, color and stuff, right? Yeah, so it's, it is, so it's both, both the algaes, particularly spirulina, are complete algae, or complete protein and very bio uh, bioavailable, probably 99% bioavailable because of this rapid absorption, because there's no cellulose wall, and because your body doesn't have to work to digest it, it just gets absorbed. And if you chew it sublingually, it gets absorbed um, even faster. So, uh, so it's it's a it's really crazy um, in terms of. And and by the way, the United Nations in 1974 had a global conference on spirulina and identified it as the answer to world hunger because of the protein uh, and because it is so sustainable. And I can send you the papers about the conference and they've been so bullish about spirulina ever since. And that, that was like 40 years ago. So um, it has, algae is gonna change the world. And I just happen to be, you know, I'm 10 years in doing this, but it's, I'm still very, very much at the front end. And I can't wait for the rest of the world to wake up to the benefits of algae. We're going to come back to that point on the UN a little bit later. Let's talk chlorella and just some of the health benefits here, because I know it's used quite frequently in areas like uh, heavy metal detoxification, for instance. That, yeah. uh, we chat just a little bit on uh, chlorella. Okay. So uh, remember blue green uh, was a spirulina was a blue green algae, first life on earth, high protein, energizing and by the way that second uh, it's called a blue green uh, algae because there are two pigments in spirulina one is the green pigment which is chlorophyll that most people know about and there's another pigment called phycocyanin that's blue and if you put a little tablet in a plate and the uh, the color that will come come out of it is like an aegean sea it is so beautiful but chlorella only has one pigment it's the chlorophyll but what's so amazing about chlorella is it has the highest concentration of chlorophyll in the world. Remember, spirulina has the highest concentration of protein. Chlorella has the highest chlorophyll. So much so that it has 25 times more than liquid chlorophyll, which of course is made from alfalfa sprouts, 25 times more than um, wheatgrass, a thousand times more than like Chinese lettuce, 200 times more than spinach. I mean, it is a rock star when it comes to chlorophyll. So you say to yourself, so what's so important about chlorophyll? Well, 
Chlorophyll is a fat-based pigment. Um, the, the blue in the in spirulina is, is a water-based pigment. We can talk about that later on. But what's so important about that? Well, all of your health issues stem to kind of three main things. Your gut, your, the health of your cell walls, where, so the mitochondria can be looked after, and your liver. And chlorophyll prop, uh, heals all three. But let's talk about the cell wall, especially because of the fat piece. So I say that uh, you know, if, you, if your cells aren't healthy, and uh, the nutrients can't get in and toxins can't get out. And you know, we've always heard people saying, oh, well, so such and such is cleansing. Well, what is exactly does that mean? Well, I'm gonna tell you what that means. Chlorophyll, consider when you have windows that are dirty, right? You can't see out and sunlight can't get in. Not a good situation. Mm -hmm. Cells are the same way. If they're not healthy, nutrients can't get in and toxins can't get out. Chlorophyll, consider chlorophyll at, like your window washers because it's, it's so healing to the cell walls and buffs them up with the fat that nutrients can get in and toxins can get out. That's what cleansing is. And when, because if they don't get the toxins out, they start damaging the mitochondria. If the nutrients can't get in, you're not getting ATP. I mean, it, uh, then you start getting rogue cells, which lead to cancer cells. They can't communicate and it's just a slippery slope after that. So chlorophyll is so important, but here's the problem. Our soils are so nutrient deprived that even if you eat organic, it is really hard to get your chlorophyll needs met by the, what's, what's in our food supply. So that's why chlorella is just like a, the, the answer to everything because, and I'm gonna tell you more about what, why, because it, it has even more amazing attributes. It has all of this rich chlorophyll. 10% of chlorophyll only gets absorbed in your stomach. The rest of it travels through your liver and down through your, your, your gut and your colon. So it's, it's cleansing and absorbing toxins all the way down. And an interesting fact I read was back in World War I, when they ran out of blood transfusions for the injured during the war, they would give them liquid chlorophyll because they would, it would uh, help them heal just as fast as a blood transfusion. And I used to wonder about this until I discovered why, and you're welcome to do this or I can send you this image. The chemical composition of chlorophyll is virtually identical to your hemoglobin. It's exactly the same composition. The only difference is that chlorophyll has a um, magnesium atom in the middle and your, your hemoglobin has a um, um, iron atom in the middle. And th that iron atom is what carries oxygen in your blood so it's very very important but but that I tell people that's going to be a tip off how important chlorophyll is to your to your health and to your vitality because it's virtually identical so so again chlor chlorella has the highest concentration of chlorophyll so let's talk about some of the other attributes of chlorella the other main one that you mentioned which is so um, incredible is that it is, has the ability to pull out uh, toxins of any kind all the heavy metals mercury, lead, radiation. It also pulls out um, uh, um, alcohol for anybody who's interested. Uh, you're, sober, you're sober in an hour and a half and um, uh, you'll never have a hangover. It also pulls out lactic acid. So athletes love it as a post-workout. They use the spirulina as a pre-workout to give them energy and focus. And then the chlorella pulls out the lactic acid so their muscles aren't sore. So what is it that's doing this? Well, remember I said spirulina has no cellulose wall and it's not really, it's, a, it's a technically a bacteria. Chlorella has the hardest cellulose wall in the plant kingdom. And it's that hard cellulose wall uh, that attaches to the toxins. It's also called an adaptogen because it, it can detect um, what's supposed to be there and what's not. A lot of people use activated charcoal to pull out um, toxins, but the problem with activated charcoal is that it pulls out all minerals. So now you're depleting your body of everything. And chlorella is not like that. In fact, it's loaded with 40 vitamins and minerals. It only pulls out the bad boys. It, and, and it populates you with the good minerals, magnesium, potassium, um, phosphorus, calcium, all the good stuff. Um, I call it intelligent food because it, it can make that distinction between what needs to be removed and what should stay there. I read a, a report a number of years ago. I wish I kept the source. I don't have it. But they were studying, and I think they were using chlorella. They were using algae as a vehicle for delivering chemotherapy treatments. So I don't know whether they gave the, the patient um, the, the, um, the treatment orally or injected, but they put the the chemo treatment in the algae. The algae would find the tumor and, and, it, and attach to it to deliver the chemo treatment. 
because that's a problem with chemo chemotherapy. It kills everything, right? Mm -hmm. But the algae could find the place, the places where it should go to deliver the the chemo. It so as I mean, that's got to be something. That's really special. I mean, I, I just don't know how that even happens. But so I, that's why I call it intelligent food. So in addition to that. Chlorella has your daily requirement of K2, and we can talk more about the importance of K2 and why everybody is short of it. Mm -hmm. And there's only about two food sources, and grass-fed animal protein or chlorella. There's a little bit in spirulina, but really chlorella. Um, it has 40 vitamins and minerals. It has the highest concentration of RNA and DNA in the world. And as you get older, this is very important because uh, your RNA and DNA get damaged, and so this helps you, um, uh, uh, you know, grow, you know, continue living without as much, you know, cellular damage. Um, it has the, um, also has something called chlorella growth factor, which speeds up the growth of your cells. So, so chlorella is a healing algae. We, we call ours recovery bits because it helps you recover your health or it helps you recover from fitness or it helps you recover from your day. It pulls out the toxins. We are so bombarded with toxins. Every single person in the world should be taking chlorella every single day. There have been 80,000 chemicals released in our world since World War II. We don't, our immune systems were not built to support this kind of toxic load. And even if it's just incrementally a little bit of toxin here, a little bit of toxin there, it all gathers in your cells and in your organs and in your brain. You know, Alzheimer's are realizing is often caused by accumulated uh, aluminum. Uh, same with thyroid issues, a lot of food disorders and autoimmune. It's toxins and inflammation are, are really causing so much of this and you've got to get them out. So if you don't want, if you want something that's natural, remember chlorella is a food and it's harvested cleanly, at least ours is. Um, it's, and we work with biological dentists because, um, you know, they pull up mercury, you know, in, in amograms and, um, I, I, and I, and once I sort of wrap up with chlorella, I want to tell you what, why our chlorella is special and clean because of this broken cell wall situation. So, oh, wow. so loaded with chlorophyll, uh, detoxing, healing, cleansing. Um, uh, the, the, it's very much a recovery wellness algae, completely different from spirulina. And you should be taking both of them because they do completely different things. You can take them together, separate, instead of food, with food. Oh, and the, the other magical thing about chlorella is it actually tastes pretty good. Most people do not like the flavor of spirulina, and I get that um, because it's very chewy because of the protein and the essential fatty acids. It's kind of got this earthy, it's really a hard flavor, to, and it's really not, uh, all the kids like it because it turns their tongue green. Chlorella, on the other hand, tastes like a, ses a sunflower seed or a soy nut, or, and it's very dry and crunchy. And I, whenever I go to conferences, I take sea salt and macadamia nuts with me and I make people try them together. When you have the chlorella with a little bit of sea salt and a couple of macadamia nuts in your mouth together, you close your eyes, you think you're eating potato chips. I mean, it is, it doesn't work with spirulina, just the chlorella, but you can also eat it with almonds or banana chips or whatever you want. Chlorella, we're going to make it into trail mix. It's unbelievable so now it's not just a healthy snack it's truly a healing snack so i really encourage people to try eating the chlorella because it's much more satisfying if you're eating something um, than swallowing it because we you know we do want you to have at least 10 15 or 20 and if you can make 30 a day um, but chlorella is man it's 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 my you know i couldn't live without it i just couldn't live without it this is super exciting and i'm really glad that we're having this conversation because I'm, I'm just excited. But yeah. Catherine, how did you get into this? Because <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like yeah. a very interesting, you know, niche world within the health space. How did you come into algae? Yeah, well, I certainly wasn't planning on this. I am Canadian and all my education was in Canada. Um, and uh, I did an MBA in international business. And I was, you know, I'd started, I was a publisher of an interior design magazine. I had various you know, careers, um, but all in business, of course. And then in Canada, my younger sister developed uh, breast cancer. She's fine now, but 10 years ago, and thank God for this, her oncologist told her she should change her diet to an alkaline diet because it would help her with her healing. She was going to do the chemotherapy. Now, remember, this was 10 years ago, and this knowledge of plant-based nutrition was nobody, it was not discussed. So this was brand new. So she got home and they didn't tell her what it was or why it worked. They just said, you got to do this. 
So she called me, not that I knew anything about nutrition, but I'm a really good researcher and I can find out anything. <laughs> That's why I know so much about algae because it's like, I was like Alice in Wonderland. Oh, it does that too. Oh, it does that too. Oh my God, I need to know more. So anyways, so I said, don't worry, I'll help you, honey. We'll figure it out. So I found out an alkaline diet was basically a plant-based diet because of all the chlorophyll and the phytonutrients that help build your immune system. And we can talk more about that later if you want. So she did through, go through chemo. She did change her diet. She still has a, a plant-based diet. And in the process of helping her, I read, I started reading more about plant-based nutrition. By the time I got to my 10th book, <laughs> I thought, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Like, why doesn't anybody in, in America know about this? Someone should tell them. So that, well, I'm, I'm a very action-oriented person. I thought, well, I have no idea what to do with this, but I think I'm going to try to do something. So I gave up my 25-year corporate career. I went back to school. I didn't have time to get a registered dietitian degree. And, yeah, I already had two. So I went to the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, learned about health coaching. And so I'm a certified health coach. Uh, so then I coached for a year, taught nutrition for a year, trying to get people to eat greens, and found out a very important thing. Everybody knows they should eat healthier and probably incorporate more greens, but everyone's busy or they don't like the taste or it's too much work or the kids won't eat them. So that, well, how can I help people eat healthier if I can't get them to eat greens? So that I got to find something that's easy, fast, green, back to the drawing board, just doing more research. And I had an epiphany one day. Uh, what about that algae stuff I'd found for my sister? I'm just going to take another, you know, circle back to that. Well, that was it. That was that was the Alice in Wonderland falling down the rabbit hole because I started re reading about algae, found out it was the multi-billion dollar industry in Asia where it had been used for 50 years, especially in Japan. They don't take vitamins in Japan. They only take chlorella every day. And by the way, they have the best longevity, lowest cancer rates, and best uh, skin and hair that I can find. Uh, it's been studied for you know probably 100 years. There's 100,000 studies on the efficacy uh, of algae for everything, whether it's VO2 uptake or you know recovering from it, it, you know injury, or it's it's the most documented food. But here's the problem: all the scientists that have done all this research, they just talk to each other. They have not given this information to the consumers, mm -hmm. and the you know it's it the packaging is in poor in America, so nobody knew about it. Nobody explained what it does. So. When I saw what this stuff does and I saw the science, I decided 10 years ago I was going to spend the rest of my life, if it took that long, to get algae into the mainstream. And I, it will probably take at least another 10 or 20 years. So that's okay because I don't mind. I'm doing this. I feel like I'm like a public service. I, this stuff, it, and it's eco-friendly, sustainable. It's the most sustainable crop in the world. And in fact, the White House here in America in January of this year, uh, uh, issued the first, very first algae agricultural act. They mm -hmm. include it in the uh, 2019 farm bill because even they have realized the nutrient density of algae, the importance of it to our future food supply, and that it's all grown in Asia. Virtually none of it is grown in America. So they're trying to encourage farmers through subsidies and grants to start growing algae here um, because it, it's, it's, it is, like I said, a game changer. We can talk more about the sustainability issues later too if you want. So that's how I found it. I just wanted to help my sister. And then I thought, well, now I can help a few more people. And then I can help a few more. And then I was not planning on building a company, trust me. But this is my, my little tip to any entrepreneur or budding entrepreneur. If there's a little voice in the back of your mind or something that you just can't stop researching and you just keep asking questions and you have curiosity, follow it. Follow it. I had no idea what I was going to do when I did this. I just knew I, want, I had some knowledge. And it seems to be needed. And I just kept going with it. Um, and I have, I'm so proud of my company. I'm so proud of what we do. I'm so proud of what the product is. I was on Shark Tank a little while ago. And I'm meeting with Dr. Oz next week. And we're finally starting to get some lift and helping people understand what this stuff does. With, um, but it's, it, you know, I, 10 years is a long time to slug it out and not make any, you know, I haven't even paid myself. So. <laughs> Yeah, I, I know the feeling, the entrepreneurial feeling, and I'm sure there yeah. are many people here listening that know yeah. that feeling as well. Yeah, it's very I, satisfying work, though, I will say, just it, long, it, long, long hours. <laughs> let's, let's talk about the process, because you mentioned something earlier uh, with the cracked, I believe, cell wall. Um, yes. Also, your process in general. 
Can right. Go a little. Let's go into that because yeah. it's unique, and I want to understand why is that important. Okay, sure. Well, remember I said spirulina has no cellulose wall, so it, um, so it doesn't have to be cracked. It's only the chlorella that needs to be cracked. And the FDA in America and also Health Canada uh, require all chlorella that's sold in North America, excuse me, to have cracked cell wall. In Europe, they don't require that, but you generally want cracked cell wall, and here's why. Remember I said chlorella has the hardest cellulose wall in the plant kingdom. And so if you don't crack it, it is so hard, your body just can't absorb the nutrients. All the nutrients are inside. So um, there's a company called Sun Chlorella based in Japan. And about 50 years ago, I, um, I give them full credit and I'm very honored that they did this. They started to learn about you know, the value of chlorella uh, for a de as detoxing and it took them, and it had never been grown for mass consumption back in the 50s. They were the ones. So they, it took them 10 years to figure out how to grow it and they did. And then they learned about this, this requirement to crack the chlorella. So they figured out a, pa a technique that they patented, it's called Dynamil, that cracks the, 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 the um, cell wall of the chlorella. And what they do is they tumble the, the chlorella with glass beads. And um, that physically smashes the chlorella so that you, know, it, it's, you can absorb it. But the problem is the glass heats up when it's going through this tumbling process. And there was always worry that lead from the glass would leak into the chlorella. Now they always denied that that was happening. And then about 10 or 11 years ago, just before I started my company, the state of California tested their chlorella and didn't fi find that it had excessive amounts of lead and they said, well, you can either put a warning on your package uh, uh, or stop selling in America. So they put a warning on their package that said this, this you know, um, food group contains a substance known to cause birth defects and brain disorders. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I told my team, like, like how much lead is too much lead? I, I would say any lead. So um, I, because I'm doing this to help people be healthy, I, I just said, I can't do that. It just, you know, so I was fortunate to find a new technique that had just been developed where they passed the chlorella through a sound chamber. And so it's the vibrations that are cracking the chlorella, similar to how like an opera singer's voice cracked glass. And that's the technique that we use. Now the problem is, however, 99.99% of the entire chlorella industry uses that same technique that was developed by Sun Chlorella. So we're one of the very, and we're the one of the very few companies that I know that uses this sound chamber vibrational um, technique to crack the chlorella. That's why the Mercury Poisoning Association wants to work with us. That's why biological dentists like to work with us. That's why we work with Dr. Dominique D'Agostino and lots of uh, other nutritionists because I do third-party lab tests. I do a whole series for every batch that we grow because you were asking earlier about the you know, the cleanliness, and we, we grow ours in triple filtered spring mountain water because, as I mentioned earlier, algae absorbs whatever's in the water, and you do not want um, anything, spirulina or chlorella, from China because they don't, they're not as careful and they don't really know what's going on. They put other stuff in there, and Japan still has the Fukushima issue. So, so Taiwan is world renowned for having the cleanest algae period and the company that grows ours because it has such pure water. I, I feel we're the we have the, the best, we are the highest quality, that's why we're always endorsed by so many um, professionals. But then we use this technique that's clean for the cracking of the chlorella. Then I do all these lab tests here. I also do a, I, there's only three labs in the world that I know that will test for neurotoxins, BMAA. I finally found one and I, I knew we would, wouldn't have any and sure enough, we don't have any neurotoxins because it's grown so carefully. So, so the cracked cell wall, is important for the absorption of the nutrients. Why bother to be like, I don't know, eat, just, I, I don't know how, what the comparison is. You just can't absorb it. In Europe, I don't know why they don't insist on crack cell wall. It's yeah. not a requirement, but um, yeah, there you go. That's, the, that's what this whole cell wall thing is. That's incredible. And thank you for your, your commitment to the quality. <laughs> That's, I, I love somebody that's that thorough because if I were to have a company, I'd want to be that thorough and diligence everything. But thank you. Yeah, it's it took me a long time because I didn't come from a biochemistry or plant 
plant uh, biology background, but I'm determined to make a difference in the world. And I knew that I had to have the answers for everything because if I had conversations like this, um, and I didn't, uh, although I will say, I still don't know everything. There's always more to learn. And if I don't know anything, I will find it. <laughs> that, that curiosity is awesome. Uh, let's talk about K2 because yes. K2 is very hard to get in a typical American diet. It's also I mean, in almost every diet, right? You think of foods, it's almost impossible. Like natto, foods like natto, which are not very appealing to most Western palates as being high in K2, but K2, how can we get it from algae? Well, let's talk about what K2 is first, because I'm sure most people don't know what it is. It was a vitamin that was only discovered about 25 years ago, and um, it is related to K1, which is in green plants, uh, like kale and spinach and stuff, but it's it, we cannot um, convert K1 to K2, only animals can. So what, uh, and what K2 does, well, let me back up. So the issue is we're all taking calcium and we're all taking D3 to help the absorption with calcium. But here's the problem. The calcium is not being absorbed by our bones. It's getting absorbed in what's called soft tissue. Now that includes your brain, your blood vessels, your organs, your skin, all these places you do not want excess calcium. They're realizing Alzheimer's is partly caused by calcification of the brain, not a good thing. Uh, they're realizing heart disease is partly a calcification of your blood vessels. All that, it's called arteriosclerosis, is when your blood vessels get crunchy and immobile, that's calcium that's making, that's causing it, it builds it up and then you have a, a stroke. Um, you have uh, kidney stones, guess what they are? Yep, calcium. So. And wrinkles, wrinkles are caused when calcium builds up in your skin, at, uh, which uh, causes your elastin to, to collapse. It's like having a, a bridge, the structure of a bridge collapsing. Um, so your skin wrinkles. You know, I don't want to tell you how old I am, but I don't have any wrinkles. It's crazy. And I think it's because of the K2. So K2 moves calcium out of all these places where it does not belong and shuttles it into your bones where it does belong and which also prevents osteoporosis. Now the reason why nobody in North America has K2 is, is it's so obvious when you think about it but, and, but it's also a sad story. So the only places that you can get K2 from naturally from food are grass-fed animal protein, uh, an odd dish called natto, which nobody in America eats because it's a Japanese dish. It's really strange. And algae. And I don't think anybody even knew K2 was an algae. I didn't until we did our lab tests. Mm -hmm. The chlorella in particular has your daily requirement of K2. So now that we know what K2 is, why don't we have it? And, uh, and the, there's only two sources really in North America where you can get it. Why? Well, you know, nobody knew about algae. So of course it's not, um, not, not there. So let's look at the grass-fed animal protein. What's, what's happened there? Well, back in the 60s, the cattle and the chickens and everybody were on pastures. And guess what they were eating? Grass. <laughs> Animals have a bacteria in their gut that allows them to convert the K1 that's in the grass to K2. So when we humans eat the chicken or the dairy or the beef or something, we get the K2 because it's in the animal flesh. Of course, if you're vegan, you're out of luck. But in the 70s, the farmers found out that if they fed the, the animals corn and put them in enclosures, they would get fat faster and they would make more money. So that's what they did. Guess what? No more K2 because corn doesn't have anything green in it. So the, immediately the rise of heart disease completely parallels the rise and the implement, implementation of animals being fed corn. Crazy, huh? So we, because we don't have the bacteria that can convert the K1, you can eat a room full of kale and you'll never get a drop of K2. So that's, so, so that's why heart disease has escalated. Alzheimer's has escalated. You know, it just, it's because we don't have K2 in our diet. Now you can buy K2 supplements. Uh, that's, that those are now available, but I will caution you that they, the K2 supplements are made from fermented chickpeas and K2 is a very complicated vitamin. There's different categories of K2. They call them M1, M2, M3, M4. So the kind that's in the supplement is called M7, which is okay, but the problem is the brain can only absorb M4, the variation of K2, M4, and that is in food. So it's in your grass-fed animal protein or your 
chlorella algae. So if you want to get your biggest bang for your buck, you should be taking M4 version of K2 because it will it will help all of your body, not just a part of your body. But but if if nothing else, you just get K2 in you because it's it's the lack of it is just causing so much havoc with our health. Wow. I know, crazy, huh? <laughs> there's there's a lot I can go into here. <laughs> One of the reasons why I became fascinated about with algae is the presence of phytonutrients, but also the absence of anti-nutrients. Correct. Let's talk about the phytonutrients first, and then really explaining what a phytonutrient is, and go down that route, and then we'll come back to the anti-nutrients afterwards. Sure. Well, I, I'm just going to, you know, a, a brief overview is that there's there's thousands and thousands of microscopic nutrients, um, of which phytonutrients are one, that when you eat the, a plant-based uh, diet, or just when you eat anything green, there's harmonies and synergies that boost the immune system. So um, let's let's talk about, you know, it could be chlorophyll, for example, which is a very alkaline. Remember, I got all in, I got into this because of the, my sister's doctor recommended an alkaline diet. So why is that so important? It doesn't matter whether you're going through chemotherapy. It's just your blood, a lot of people don't realize, well, we all realize that your t body temperature has to be 98.6 to be healthy. Well, there's another number that you need to be aware of. It's called the pH level of your blood. And your blood needs to be, I think it's 7.34 to be healthy. Um, and that's kind of like the middle of the scale. The problem is when you eat uh, acidic food like animal protein or dairy or processed foods or alcohol, or if you're stressed out because that causes chemical reactions in your body that are also acidic. So when, you, when that happens, uh, your body is so intelligent that it, it kind of goes red alert, red alert. You, our blood pH is, is becoming more too acidic and that you would die instantly if it became too acidic. So in its intelligence, what it does is it withdraws um, minerals, which are alkaline, from your bones, from your organs, anywhere it's stored. Your bones are where most of your calcium and your minerals are stored. So it withdraws the minerals instantly into your blood to balance out that pH. But if, if you do that frequently over and over and over again, it's like not changing your tires on your car. If you, the tires wear down and wear down and wear down, eventually they, they're not very functional. Same thing, if you constantly withdraw these minerals where they're supposed to be doing important things and having actually important processes, it weakens your immune system. It's a real a hardship on your immune system. And so that causes your body to be not functioning properly and that will lead you to sickness or if you're trying to recover from sickness, it makes it more difficult. And, and the algae is the most alkaline food in the world. So it facilitates healing because it not only populates your body with minerals, it prevents that pH level from ever, um, ever changing. So, um, so it's very important to make sure that you've got um, the, the, the phytonutrients and the chlorophyll that you need to maintain your, your, your health. So mm -hmm. that's why I was, when we were talking about eggs earlier, I love eggs, but um, there's no, nothing green in there. There's no phytonutrients. Um, the, Mother Nature has provided us with all the intelligence and all the food and all the nutrients we need. We just have to pay more attention to them. And the other thing is things like that are, uh, we, I know we're going to talk about some of the anti-nutrients in plants, but there's also anti-nutrients in other things like, you know, awful omega-6s like canola oil. And uh, the way I describe canola oil is, you know, there's receptors on your cells. And, you know, when you have a bad, if, if the receptor is spot is taken up by something like can canola oil, which is so damaging, it's like someone's stealing your parking spot. If the bad oil is there, the good oil can't get in. Uh, so, so it's not just putting the good stuff in your diet. You got to take the bad stuff out because it, the bad stuff's taken up your parking spot. <laughs> I'm going to steal that analogy from you at some point because I've been, I've explained why vegetable oil is just a horrible thing for everyone. Oh, and disgusting. the best analogy I've heard so far is stealing the parking spot. So thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I'll give you another one you're welcome to use. 
uh, I refer to chlorella and also chlorophyll to a certain degree as giving your body a shower from the inside. Because we all know you have to shower on the outside, but there's lots of garbage on the inside and chlorella is like giving your body a shower on the inside. <laughs> if I take uh, spirulina, for instance, first thing in the morning, and we have a lot of people listening to this that are cognitive ninjas, and one of the strategies that they use to enhance brain function is fasting. Yes. If you take spirulina first thing in the morning, does it break your fast? Does it disrupt autophagy? No, no. It's a beautiful thing. Um, uh, although, you know, if you want to do a long water fast, and I love fasting, and I love long-term fasting, I love intermittent fasting, it is, it is, there's nothing like it. Um, it's challenging if you've never done it before, but it does not, because there's no um, glucose, no sugar, no carbs, it does not break your fast. Uh, so it, it's particularly helpful with intermittent fasting, or if you're getting into the keto diet and because you know there's that keto flu because now you have no carbs so your body's kind of you know getting rid of all the old stuff so the spirulina because it's energizing lifts your brain um focus most people are expecting the energy physically but they don't anticipate the mental focus um we have brain surgeons that use this stuff so uh, it does not inter interfere with your fast you can do you can use your meters to test your ketones and your glucose nothing changes um, so it's really terrific. And, and, you know, we recommend when I started, we were working with athletes. So we were recommending 30 of the little tablets per dosage, but now we're working with consumers and quite honestly, they're so nutrient deprived that even five or 10, um, will boost their, their health and satisfy their hunger for a little while. More is always better. It's like eating a salad. You can't have too much of this stuff. I eat probably over a hundred easy of chlorella every day, every day and half for eight years. And um, people usually think I'm 20 years younger at least than what I really am, which is kind of cool. So um, yeah, I would, now you can also take the chlorella, which is my preference flavor wise, mm -hmm. but it will not give you that boost of energy um, or, or the satisfy your hunger. And it's odd because the nutrients are very similar, but again, it's these harmonies between the the different um, nutrients and, and micronutrients that have different effects on your body. So spirulina is definitely the one to take in the morning to get start your day. Uh, put it in a smoothie if you want, if you're not fasting. Um, but uh, And take it any time. Take it at lunch. Take it at 2 o'clock. Take it before your uh, workout. Uh, but also just a little tip. Don't expect lightning bolts from the sky. This is not a stimulant. There's no caffeine. There's no sugar. Um, the best way we describe it is you feel fresh. You feel like you just had a great night's sleep. You're just alert. Um, you won't. E you may not even notice it, but you will notice that. Hey, you know, if you're on a workout, hey, I lifted more and wasn't even trying. Or hey, I got through a whole day and you know, could you know, went for a two-hour run afterwards. It's just, it just has that very subtle whispering, uh, non-fatigue effect uh, mentally and physically. It seems like a very interesting solution to people who are both trying to solve for body composition as well as the benefits of fasting because yeah. with the spirulina being so protein dense, if you can keep your protein up and have it be muscle sparing in a way, that right. I mean, it's a fantastic solution actually. Well, the other thing I want to point out is, um, so a, t a serving of 30 tablets only has five grams of protein. So again, if you're ketogenic, it will not throw you, again, throw, won't throw you out of ketosis. It also does not activate the mTOR pathway. Hmm. This is a really important issue because <clears throat> uh, a lot of protein when you're younger is good because you're building, mTOR pathway builds muscle and builds cells. But as you get older, because we all have more cancer cells in us as we get older, what's happening is that extra protein is being used to activate more of the, the mTOR pathways, activating more cellular cancer cell growth. Mm -hmm. Not a good thing. So, um, so, the, so you can have, again, as much of the algae as you like with all the protein and no activation of the mTOR pathway. Interesting. So very happy about that. Yeah. So did I have, a, a, could, did I have the muscle sparing part wrong or was it? No, no, you're no, you're right, but it doesn't. Um, it because you're getting the protein, so you're getting the muscle correct. But but it's not. I, again, I call it. A, it's a, called an adaptogen. It just knows what to do. It's intelligent food. It just it just knows what to do in your body. And and um, it's particularly spirulina, but also chlorella. It's um, 
it can be used for newborns, athletes, moms, soccer kids, granddads, pets. Animals love this stuff. So it's the safest form of food you can ever give anybody. Uh, and in Japan, when uh, babies are born they, and they're preemies and they can't digest mother's milk, they have found that the spirulina in water is the only thing that keeps them alive. And I was always curious about that. And then a couple of years ago, I was looking at the nutrient profile, particularly the uh, uh, amino acid profile of mother's breast milk, colostrum. And I thought, gosh, that looks awfully familiar. So I scooted back to our nutrient chart. And wouldn't you know, the, the amino acid profile of mother's breast milk is virtually identical to spirulina. Plus, spirulina has something, an, an amino acid or a uh, uh, essential fatty acid called GLA, which um, <clears throat> the only other place there's more GLA is mother's breast milk. And the why, reason why it's in mother's breast milk is because this is the essential fatty acid that helps the baby's brain grow because it doubles or triples in size within the first couple of years. So, you know, we all need brain health. We all need our brain to be functioning properly. And so it's in the spirulina along with all the, the same aminos in mother's breast milk. And brother, mother's breast milk is known as the perfect food, nature's perfect food. So I consider algae the same way. It's, it's a, and they're the two foods that you could live on forever. Algae never goes bad. <clears throat> An interesting little side note is that it also never dies. So you can grow algae, and if the growing conditions, you know, like the sunshine disappears or the rain stops, uh, it, any other crop, corn, tomatoes, doesn't matter what it is, will die. Not algae. It just goes dormant. They have, they have documented it up to 40 years going dormant, and then it will start growing again. And um, I read an interesting uh, thing in um, the National Geographic. There was a team of people that went up to the Antarctic, and they chopped some ice, and they, they carbon dated it to be like, three and a half billion, billion years old, and they found some algae in there. So just out of curiosity, they took the algae and put it in some Petri dishes and put some water in it. Wouldn't you know, it started growing again. So so it, it never dies, and it never goes bad. You could buy our algae and, and you know save it for 40 years, and you know we have to put an expiry date on it, but it technically never goes bad. And that's why I want us to grow and be successful so we could you know, give this stuff away to disaster areas and help people in other parts of the world have access to this wonderfully rich uh, nutritionally dense food that could change things for them so so it's it's pretty neat stuff <laughs> Catherine one last question before we go into the final six and <clears throat> something you said earlier it kind of flagged an interest to me 40 years ago the UN investigated spirulina as kind of a solution to world hunger in a way why do you think we haven't made that much progress with spirulina in 40 years? Well, you know, it's politics, it's business, it's branding, it's education. Um, I'm, I've committed myself to being a cheerleader for algae, and I'll do whatever it takes, uh, as long as it takes, because I'm aware of that. Um, in Asia, you know, People drive by algae farms, it's completely normal, just like we drive by corn farms. So it's part of the lifestyle there. And, you know, I, I uh, actually have, I'm going to a big meeting next week in New York and um, because people were saying, well, why isn't algae, you know, known here? Well, it's not part of our lifestyle. We never see an algae farm. Um, and so people think it's weird. Well, you know, 20 years ago, people thought stevia was weird, but it had been around for, you know, hundreds of years in South America, people thought chia seed was weird. Well, you know, the Aztecs are, used it for dec you know, decades or centuries. Um, same with uh, quinoa. There's lots of foods that are very common in other parts of the world, but Amer if it hasn't been introduced to America and hasn't been packaged and branded and, ed and, and explained properly, Americans just think it's downright weird and they don't want any part of it. So, Part of my effort has been to try to make algae less weird looking. It's not pond scum. It's, it's a very nutrient dense food. Um, and so the poor UN, I mean, they're just, they're a political organization. They have their scientists who know the same nutritional value that the scientists here know. But like I said, the scientists only talk to each other. So if I can get the ball rolling in America and start helping people see the nutrient value of algae that is not weird, and I'm trying my best to package it in ways that are friendly, we can get the momentum going 
and, and there are algae conferences, but again, they're only attended by scientists. But we can get it going in the mainstream, just like CBD oil just exploded. Well, I want the same thing to algae. Then we'll have leverage. Then we'll have budget. Then we'll have you know, the vo you know, access to the politicians. This will just take off. But it, it's probably going to be another five years of heavy lifting to get to that point. But um, anybody who starts taking this, I promise you, you will feel different. You will. You can eliminate other foods. You can eliminate other vitamins. You will just. Um, it will. It will simplify your life. You will help the earth because it's sustainable. You get ten crops a year of algae. Uh, other crops you get one, and there's no negative uh, footprint. No. No carbon footprint whatsoever. It's, 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 you'll save the oceans even. So, <laughs> and the way you package it, and the way you package it makes it easy to travel with. And yes. for those listening, you travel quite a bit. It's a much, much better alternative to plain food. Powder. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we sell the bags on our website, energybits.com. There's a thousand tablets in a bag, um, but we give you a little empty tin inside that you can fill up and always take with you. And then we also sell individually packed single, what I call single serving. So there's 30 tablets in a single serving and we sell those on Amazon and through doctors and nutritionists. Uh, we all, at Christmas time, we're gonna sell them on our box as well. So we try to make it very accessible and very easy to travel with. Cause, um, cause for that reason, like people are all over the world and they need to throw things in their, in their um, you know, carry on and their briefcase and whatever. So yeah, we make it as easy as possible but it's really high quality stuff. <laughs> Catherine, I want to transition now into what I call the superhuman six. So final six rapid fire questions. Okay. Here. <laughs> favorite piece of technology which you've purchased in the past year? Well, probably this camera that's uh, allowing me to talk to you. <laughs> um, I'm not a big technology uh, person, so I'm, uh, I, I, was, I was thinking about that and, I don't know. I haven't really purchased any big technology other than my little camera um, uh, or the microphone. But I do. I couldn't live without Uber. I'll say that. I'm about to buy the iPhone 11. And the funniest thing you'll probably chuckle is I I, I bought myself a new fridge. And if I leave the door open, it 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 beeps. So <laughs> and I and if I didn't if it didn't beep, uh, you know, I might just it might run itself out. So I was happy that they included technology into my, in my new fridge. So that was, that's the best I can do. <laughs> beautiful. Beautiful. How do you unwind? Well, I work 16 hours days like most entrepreneurs. So there's not a lot of time to unwind, but I, I like to do yoga. I, um, I do hot yoga. I, I walk outside. I love to do a three mile walk. And then I, I do um, a little high intensity uh, workouts about two or three times a week. So, uh, and I read. I'm a big reader, so those are those are my go-to's. <laughs> What's the best thing you've done to enhance your productivity? Well, um, I do a lot of research, as you can tell, and I'm and I run the company. So the thing that I have found, if I have a deadline <clears throat> or I have to go deep, I just don't read my emails. There'll be, I'll be, it will take me sometimes a day to catch up, but if I have to do some serious thinking, it's too distracting. I just, so that was, that's my tip. Definitely don't read your emails. <laughs> Favorite place to go on vacation? Well, I haven't taken a serious vacation in <laughs> 10 years, <laughs> but uh, top of my list is Costa Rica. I'm eager to get there. It's very clean and healthy and I have lots of, I love being outdoors and they, I love spas and as I said, yoga. So that's where I want to go. I was just in LA for a week and I love the buzz of LA. So um, yeah, anytime I can get outside is a good thing <laughs> with trees. I'm a tree person. That's great. What book has significantly impacted your life and your ability to show up and perform in it? Well, I have a, I have a, I have a book and a, actually a, a primer that I, I, some people may have heard of it. I, it's been around for 50 years. I'm reading it for the second time now because it's pretty heavy going. But it's called A Course in Miracles, mm -hmm. um, and it's I think about two or three thousand pages. So it's not wow. light reading, and the pages are thin like the Bible. So uh, it's it just helps you um, think uh, it, it, if 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 your life isn't 
if you aren't leading the life and feeling joy um, and life just seems too hard, it's because there's probably a filter. You're seeing the world a certain way. And this helps you understand how to maybe remove that filter so that you know, all the goodness that should be coming to you if your intentions are, are well-meaning and from the heart will support you. It's a hard book to read. So there's another book, I've, and you can buy these on, on Amazon. It's, and the publisher is called Foundation for Inner Peace. And, uh, but if, to, to get you started, there's a, a shorter, much shorter book called A Course in Miracles Made Easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like your uh, cheat sheet on, on the book, and it's only about, you know, 150 pages by a man by the name of Alan Cohen. And um, he kind of summarizes everything that's in the big, you know, Papa Bear version. And um, uh, so I, it's, like I say, it's heavy reading. It's hard to carry on an airplane because it weighs a freaking two pounds, but uh, it's very powerful. And I'll give you one more because um, they kind of all work together. Um, uh, it's, a, it's called Money and the Law of Attraction. Uh, the um, authors are Esther and Jerry Hicks, and it's channeled knowledge from a, or a, 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 or a group of whatever beings called Abraham. And it's kind of related to the, um, you know, the um, art of attraction and all that sort of stuff. So money in the law. So it's, it's, it was an interesting, it was also an interesting, you know, book, much lighter to carry on an airplane. <laughs> also on Amazon. <laughs> Catherine, thank you again for all this time today and the education you provided us. Look, I, I find it a fantastic thing to bring on planes, especially. Uh, but where can people find out more about you? Sure. Well, um, we uh, are on M. Um, you can find us on the website. It's um, www.energybits.com, and we sell our large our uh, LG tablets in these large bags of a thousand tablets. Uh, the regular price for a bag is $120, but I have a discount code, a 20% discount code for all your listeners. Uh, the discount code is superhuman, all one word. It could be uppercase, lowercase, doesn't matter. You'll find it in the um, checkout uh, page. So anytime, anytime, not just like today or tomorrow, anytime you purchase anything from our website and use super, superhuman, you'll get 20% off. Now, if you're not ready for a full bag and you want to just test it out, we also sell single servings on Amazon. So you can try it in a small quantity. We also sell in America uh, through doctors, nutritionists, chiropractors, spas, functional medicine um, uh, nationwide. And they're listed on our website. So you can find one that's nearby you. And we're very active on social, Instagram, Facebook, and um, uh, Twitter, it's all um, at Energy Bits, so you can, can we have lots of fun um, prizes and contests and giveaways, so I would encourage you to come, especially to Instagram. So, um, um, yeah, that's where you can find us, and we're, we're, we'd love to work with you, help you, educate you, whatever it takes. <laughs> and your Instagram account is fantastic. Also, thank you for the discount. We'll link to all of this in the show notes at decodingsuperhuman.com slash Energy Bits. Catherine, Thank you. This is amazing. You're very welcome. Wow. Be well. <laughs> Superhumans, to all of you listening out there, have an absolutely epic day.